Recently, This Is America and the World visited Malaysia. The country sits south of Thailand and north of Singapore and uniquely consists of two distinct landmasses. The west part of the country is called Peninsula Malaysia and across the South China Sea is East Malaysia, located on the island of Borneo. Malaysia is a peaceful country and a success story. Its population of 30 million people is racially, ethnically, and religiously diverse. Perhaps not as well known in America as it could be and should be, Malaysia's international status cannot be denied. On this program, we'll learn about Malaysia's open economy, strategies to stay competitive with its neighbors in Southeast Asia, and opportunities for new foreign investment. This is America Visits Malaysia. This is America and the World is brought to you by the National Education Association, the U.S.-China Education Trust and F.Y. Chang Foundation, guided by Ambassador Julia Chang Block, President. The League of Arab States, representing 350 million people in 22 member countries. Japan, history, hospitality, and advanced technology. Sharing tomorrow. Tourism Malaysia. The Petrolin Group, expertise with integrity in the fields of oil and gas, exploration and production, energy and infrastructure. The Rotondaro Family Trust. The Embassy Series, uniting people through musical diplomacy, presenting international artists in diplomatic settings. And Ventana Productions, television facilities, editing and distribution services. Manufacturing, tourism, oil and gas all play important roles in Malaysia's diversified economy. In the capital city of Kuala Lumpur, I met with the Secretary General of the Ministry of International Trade and Industry. Among the topics we discussed was TPP, the Trans-Pacific Partnership, the free trade agreement involving 11 countries, including both Malaysia and the United States. Thank you for giving us part of your afternoon. Thank you for having us. Malaysia is a success story, isn't it? I would like to think so. Tell us the story. Well, we've come a long way from, from where we were in the, in the 50s and when we got our independence in 57. And if you, if you just look at how far we've come, um, the, the development that you have, Kuala Lumpur uh, is, is a first world city. Easily it can, it can match any other city in the world. Uh, in terms of facilities, in terms of connectedness, and uh, and Kuala Lumpur is not unique in Malaysia. In that you know you have other big cities in Malaysia, Penang. You've got uh, big a big city down south, which is just neighbouring Singapore, which has equally good facilities. Johor, Johor and Johor Bahru. So we've we've come a long way, and uh, we and also because we have been open-minded about. Uh, you know, the, the, the way we do business, our interactions, our connections with the world. In the 70s, we, we, we looked to open our markets even more and we invited uh, companies from around the world to establish in Malaysia. We build on our infrastructure, we focus on infrastructure. So we've got companies that were from the US, US 500 companies, uh, Fortune 500 companies rather are all located here and some of them moved here in the 70s, the late 70s. So in that sense, we had leaders who, who were open enough to realise that, look, this is the way to go. We, if we just look at ourselves and just focus on this small market, we cannot bring the kind of progress that we wanted. Mm. So we were very open and then you, had, you have all these big companies that are here and, and they have stayed here now. If they've stayed here for 40, 50 years, yeah. it must say something about us, what we're doing right. And we've used that advantage, we've built our infrastructure, we've continued to build our infrastructure. We're not happy where we are, we continue to look to improve and uh, make the leaps and changes, the leaps and 
changes that we need to, to do to stay competitive. It's a very competitive world in this region. You, you see how it's going in this mm. region. You have the likes of Vietnam and, and Thailand, and they're just growing. And Malaysia cannot afford to stand still or run on the spot, as I say. You've got to keep ahead of the curve. What drives the economy here? Well, we have really hardworking folks. And, I th and one of the reasons I think we are so hardworking is we have not much choice because we are in this environment in Southeast Asia where it is, the competition is so intense. Mm -hmm. You've got Singapore, it's doing really well. It's found its niche in the really high end of manufacturing and services. You've got Indonesia, which is huge domestic market. And so that by itself makes it attractive. Then you've got Thailand, which is also, you know, hungry and raring to go. You've got Vietnam. So Malaysia cannot afford to just sit back and relax. It, you know, we have to be right there and, and really work to, to, to ensure that we stay competitive. How important is TPP to Malaysia? Malaysia is a very, very open economy. And, you know, we have a very small population. Uh, when you think of 20 million, it's nothing. 29 million, it's nothing compared with what we have out there. And uh, oh, we're very open in that yeah, exports. We're one of the most open economies in the world. Huh. Uh, yes, we have a history of being an open trading country, going way back to the time of uh, the Malacca Sultanate, where you know we were on a major trading route, right? So that's been our, our tradition. And so being an open economy, you cannot not be involved in an agreement of this nature. Mm -hmm. And we, we were founder members of ASEAN, founder members of APEC, a key player at the WTO. And so the TPP is a natural progression for us. Uh, let me take advantage of your uh, work okay. here yeah. and ask you if the foreign investment here in Malaysia is predicated on location, English speaking, ease of doing business, is that all in the mix? All of the above. All of the above. Yes, and uh, we, pay we pay very close attention to those uh, items that you just mentioned, those elements that you just mentioned, because that adds to our being competitive. Mm. So of those, it's infrastructure, of course, and we, we're looking to continually improve our infrastructure. And the next big thing for us is making it as easy as possible to do business. So we're looking at uh, the licenses, the processes, the regulations. In this ministry, we go through this, this process every few months. I'll ask, do we need this? Do we need this license? Why do we need this license? So we, I encourage the young officers to question, is this necessary? Now, folks like us, we've been, I've been in this ministry for a long time. I joined this ministry in 1981. Okay, so I'm used to doing things this way and I keep doing it this way. But the new folks who come in, I say, you have the right to ask, is this relevant? Is this making sense? Why are we doing this? And I said, the most important question in this ministry is why? And everyone has the right to question. And because through questioning, you get folks to think. And when you start to think, you start to make changes which are good, which are which could be good for business. I mean, at the end of the day, our focus is very clear and very simple. Let's make it easy to do business. End of story. I'm not going to complicate with fancy vision statements and mission statements. No, it's just how do we make it easy for folks to do business in this country? And that's it. Thank you so much <laughs> for the education. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Thank you, Thank you, thank very, you much. very much. Malaysia is an economic success story. Petronas, a huge oil and gas company founded in the 1970s, continues to be one of the most financially successful companies in the world. Additionally, in process now is the Iskandar Project, a private 800 square mile development blessed by the government next door to Singapore. It's destined to become one of the driving engines of Malaysia's economy over the next 10, 20 or 30 years. Petronas is probably the uh, largest uh, corporation in Malaysia today. Uh, it uh, has got a long history. It was established back in 1974 at the back end of the, uh, uh, the oil crisis in 1973. 
It was created not as a government entity, it was created as a company, but owned by the government. I think we uh, operate uh, on the last count more than 60 countries mm. in the world. What we like to call ourselves a multinational major integrated oil and gas company. Oil and gas? Yes. So what it means is that we are involved in all facets of the petroleum industry. We start off from the exploration stage, we are involved in development, uh, we produce the oil and gas, and then uh, we are in the refinery, we do refine the, the, the oil and gas. We are in petrochemicals, we are also in the gas business, primarily LNG, liquefied natural gas. Mm -hmm. We are also in shipping, so the, it's quite uh, diversified, but it remains core towards oil and gas or petroleum business. Mm. Uh, you seem to be uh, somewhat uh, modest in uh, the fact that uh, Petronas is probably one of the most successful companies in all of Asia. Is that true? Fair statement? Uh, fair statement. Fair statement. Uh, uh, we are probably the largest uh, uh, Asian national oil company. Mm -hmm. uh, we uh, rank 69th on the uh, Fortune 500. Uh -huh. uh, we are 22nd in terms of uh, profit. And we are the sixth in terms of the most profitable oil and gas company. That's based on the 2013 ranking, I think. Mm. Yeah. How much of the economy in Malaysia depends upon the success of Petronas? Uh, to some degree, but not entirely dependent on Petronas though. Uh, we are quite blessed that Malaysia has got a very diversified ec economic base. And even that Petronas uh, is, is quite prominent in this economy, we contribute no more than 15% of the GDP. Okay. So uh, it's a, the oil industry is still one of the big uh, or the largest uh, industry in Malaysia, no doubt. But uh, I think Malaysia as a country, uh, the dependence has already been, uh, what you call this, diversified away from oil and gas. Mm -hmm. How about the environment? Because that has really, really come into play. Mm -hmm. And as, uh, as, as you know, you're involved in strategy and also yeah. risk. Yes, risk yes, is yes. In, in the title of your yes. uh, new job. How about that? I, I think no doubt, I think most companies, like in, even in Petronas, I think the level of awareness of environment uh, is at a much, much higher level than it was in the past. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we produce our corporate sustainability report uh, every once a year. And uh, I think there are a lot more programs that we, uh, we, we institute uh, to, uh, to promote environmental awareness, to also uh, for environmental uh, projects. The world needs energy. That's 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 the fact, and I think all the companies who are contributing towards uh, providing energy to the world are becoming a lot more conscious, mm -hmm. and I think we are trying to move towards more environment environmentally friendly products. Mm -hmm. So even like Petronas, I think uh, we are a lot more gas now than what we were before. Mm -hmm. I would say like what seventy percent gas in our portfolio now. The people who come from Singapore on the weekends. Yeah. To drive their cars fast on your wonderful <laughs> roads. Are they using your products? That's I hope so. <laughs> that's the question. I hope so. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you. Very Thank, much. You. Uh, Thank you. Thank you. Tell us in, in a broad stroke of the brush what the Iskander Development Project is all about. Iskander Malaysia is uh, an idea that came from the government of Malaysia as well as the government of the state of Johor way back in 2005-2006. The whole uh, objective is actually to propel uh, the southern part of the state of Johor to enable itself to become an economic powerhouse that would uh, help in the development of the nation's vision to achieve uh, Vision 2020. We have carved out uh, an area within the state of Johor that is situated right uh, across from Singapore, covering an area of about 2,217 kilometers square for the sole purpose of creating this particular region, which is now called Iskandar Malaysia, to not only be able to grow from an economic standpoint, but also balance for its social development as well as for environment. Actually, if you look from, uh, 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 from, from an outsider's perspective, you can actually look at Singapore and Iskandar as a single destination uh, for investment, for instance, because uh, Singapore has got all the advantage 
of uh, business, of the economy, and they've been growing for many, many years as, as a very strong uh, economy, whereas uh, Iskandar is just beginning. But having said that, uh, we can take advantage of Singapore's presence as much as Singapore taking advantage of our existence. Uh -huh. How is the land going to be used? When we first uh, started the idea of Iskandar Malaysia, one of the first things that we did was to draw up a plan. This is a very important document that would chart the growth, the way in which we want Iskandar Malaysia to grow. And uh, we have formulated what is now termed as the Comprehensive Development Plan. In this partic particular plan, it addresses the issue of economy, the issue of environment, as well as the issue of social development. Hence, creating a vision for Iskandar Malaysia which is to turn it into a strong and sustainable metropolis of international standing. Now, in that plan, it not only supports the nation's vision, but more importantly, it charts out the type of economic sector that we want to promote for growth in order to bring about the objectives of meeting to the high-income region. Mm -hmm. So we have identified a selected promoted sector from the economic standpoint, not only in manufacturing, but also in service. And these are the sectors that, have we, that we have seen been growing over the last nine years of our journey. So what is the timetable on the project for the completion of this entire Eskandar project? Well, if, if, if you're looking at economic region of this nature and of this size and of this complexity, it cannot be uh, achieved overnight. So we have a plan of a 20-year planning and development. Mm -hmm. And uh, we launched this uh, initiative way back in 2006. Mm -hmm. And we are now approaching our 10th year uh -huh. of development. To date, we have uh, um, achieved um, a, an investment of about 172 billion ringgit that would be equivalent to about 45 billion USD from the time that uh, we started in 2006 mm -hmm. to around June of this year. Ah. And um, by the year we reached maturity, uh, which is a 20-year journey uh, in, by the year 2025, we hope to be able to achieve a cumulative investment of around 100 billion USD, Ooh. which is equivalent to about 380 billion ringgit. What kinds of businesses would you want to attract for further investment? I would say, uh, based on our nine promoted economic sectors, that would be the best start. Why I mentioned the nine economic sectors? Because we have done careful analysis of what it takes to catapult this particular region to become uh, uh, an economy that is worthy of its growth. So those sectors are namely uh, in uh, service, for instance, would be logistics, would be tourism, uh, education, uh, healthcare, uh, and creative, as well as financial services. And in manufacturing would be electrical and electronics, oil and oleochemical, as well as food and agro-processing. So as long as you're focused in these nine economic sectors, you are safe. I think you've covered all <laughs> possibilities. Thank you so much Thank for you, the Denise. conversation. Thank you Thank very, you. very much. Thank you. Wonderful. It's really a pleasure. It's really a pleasure. Wonderful. While manufacturing is number one, tourism is big business and one of the principal drivers of Malaysia's successful economy. As a tourist destination, Malaysia has everything. Beaches, historic sites, rainforests, jungles, luxury hotels. In Putrajaya, the administrative capital, I met with the Secretary General of the Ministry of Tourism and Culture and then followed up with a conversation with the general manager of the Shangri-La Hotel in downtown Kuala Lumpur. Tourism in Malaysia is very important uh, to the economy. If you look at tourism, it's an export sector. It's very interesting because uh, foreigners come to Malaysia to and have a good time. At the same time, they spend the foreign currency uh, here in exchange, and so we generate foreign exchange earnings. Tourism is the second largest 
foreign exchange earner and is the fifth in terms of uh, generating uh, gross national income. And tourism too generates 2.2 million jobs in Malaysia, which constitute about 16% of the total labour force. Uh, Shangri-La has a magic name. It's, it's magic in its name. That's huh? true. That's true. Where, where, what's the background of that name? Uh, the the first hotel was built in Singapore, in fact. Mr. Robert Koch, the, the founder of, of the company, needed to find a name for the property in Singapore before he opened. Uh -huh. And a friend of his referred him to the book, The Shangri-La Lost Horizon, Yes. where the Shangri-La is obviously being mentioned. And that's how the name evolved and developed into our hotel name. I look in the hotel and I see, uh, just in the lobby, I see uh, businessmen, uh, young couples, older couples, families. Uh, tell us more about the uniqueness of the hotel, some of the things it has to offer. We, our location lends itself to really both the business customer as well as the leisure customer. Yeah. We are centrally located in the heart of the city. Uh, we, from our rooms, you can overlook the Twin Towers. Uh, yes. In fact, you can walk there in less than 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, at the same time, we are also located where most of the office complexes are mm -hmm. and where business is being done. So it's mm -hmm. the perfect location for both the leisure traveler and the business traveler to come and stay with us, experience our service and let us take care of them. When we have uh, uh, come here, one of the things that's making itself known is that tourism is big business here. Yes, right? it is. Absolutely. And Malaysia itself and the richness of Malaysia, the, the fantastic culture here lends itself to people coming and visiting. I myself am fascinated by this country. Uh -huh. so, so are many people that come here and want to spend their vacation here. And you have a great combination of having a city vacation like here in KL, mm -hmm. where we are located, yes. fantastic shopping, yeah. excellent food, or fantastic beach locations as well. So it's a great combination of both. What's your background? My background is I'm originally from Austria. Austria? Uh, I am. Uh, started into the hotel industry, started studying hotel school there, and then uh, worked for a while in Europe, worked in the Middle East, worked for quite a long time in China then came to Singapore and then to Malaysia. So w w what resonates uh, in, in your heart with the Asian culture? The special thing I think here, especially in, in, in Malaysia, is it's, um, first of all, it's very, they're very warm and friendly people. Yes. Now, I have to say I'm biased because I'm married to a Malaysian. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> so I've known this country for quite a long time already. Uh -huh. I've been coming to this country for a long time. Uh -huh. um, I'm living and working here now for one and a half years. But Malaysians are, in, in general, very friendly. Very yes. friendly, very accommodating and very warm and welcoming. Uh, that's part of their nature and that's part of what they do. When, and when you put all of those adjectives together, perfect for the uh, tourism Absolutely. Uh, uh, industry, the, uh, the, the, the hotel industry itself. Absolutely. Right? Warm, welcoming, can-do spirit. I can't put my arms around the fact that this is a country of 30 million people. Right. More than two million are involved in the tourism business. Right. And I think the under Secretary, uh, 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 Secretary General is what you call him here, uh, said 16% of the workforce is in the tourism industry. Yeah, it's a big business here and it's a big part of uh, what the country does and what the income of the country contributes to. Something that makes Malaysia really unique uh, and stands out from, from other Asian countries without being disrespectful is Malaysia has a very unique blend of three distinctively different cultures oh, no. that come together here. So it's, it's a bit of a melting pot. Uh, obviously there's the Malay, uh, culture that comes together, the Chinese population which is very large here as well, mm -hmm. and the Indian. And these three cultures melting together have a very nice mix uh, that is represented in the food uh, that mm -hmm. you can get in this country, mm -hmm. that is represented in the various uh, historic sites and temples that you can visit. Mm -hmm. uh, there's not many places where you can experience so many different cultures in one place uh, without having to travel too far. And that makes this country very, very unique. Well, we're awfully happy to be here. We thank you for your hospitality, and we thank you for sitting with us, talking about Malaysia and also Shangri-La. It's a great pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Special thanks to the staff of the Shangri-La Hotel in Kuala Lumpur.
for information about This Is America and the World and to watch all of our programs, visit our website, thisisamerica.net, and look for us on Facebook and Twitter. This Is America and the World is brought to you by the National Education Association, the U.S.-China Education Trust, and F.Y. Chang Foundation, guided by Ambassador Julia Chang Block, President. The League of Arab States, representing 350 million people in 22 member countries. Japan, history, hospitality, and advanced technology. Sharing tomorrow. Tourism, Malaysia. The Petrolin Group, expertise with integrity in the fields of oil and gas, exploration and production, energy and infrastructure. The Rotondaro Family Trust. The Embassy Series, uniting people through musical diplomacy, presenting international artists in diplomatic settings. And Ventana Productions, television facilities, editing and distribution services.